Man, don't worry, fable, worry, March, it from May, June down to December. Got your friends so good. Count my blessings, name them one by one. You've been so good, I will not forget. I will not forget. I will not forget. Hello and welcome to Impact Live. My name is Felix Dazzy. I trust you are having an exciting 2024. Well, today, we will be talking about the importance of having a mentor in your life. We'll be talking about everything that has to do with service, everything that has to do with the minister of the gospel. You want to make impact in life, in ministry, in Christianity, and definitely in your society and the world at large. Well, this is the program that you are tuned into. And first of all, I want to say, if you're watching us on television, head straight to our YouTube channel. It is IMPACT. T L I V E, and then you add with Felix Dazzy, and definitely you will be connected to what we are about to share. My guest for today, he is the chairman of the Free Methodist Church Ghana, and he is also um, the leader um, of the Bible League Ghana. Bible League in Ghana. Ever heard about Bible League? Well, we'll talk about it. They, uh, they are into evangelism, missionary works, they are into church planters, and everything that has to do um, with missions. And I trust trust that it'll be a blessing to you. Well, after this break, Reverend Dr. Ahmed Kwashi is my guest. We'll take in some of the exploits of Bible League Ghana. And then when we come back, we'll have an amazing time in his office right here in Accra. Don't go anywhere. This is Impact Life. We'll be back after this break. Don't worry, fable, worry, march it from May, June down to December. Got your friend so good. Count my blessings, name them one by one. You've been so good, I will not forget. I will not forget. I will not forget. Hope be my anthem. Lord, when the
no worry, fable, worry, march it from May, June down to December. Got your friend so good. Count my blessings, name them one by one. You've been so good, I will not forget. I will not forget. I will not forget. Welcome back, and um, that was um, the exploits of Bible League Ghana and uh, the things that they do and some of the things that they keep on doing right here in Ghana. Well, my guest for today is already seated. We are here in his beautiful office and we're going to have an amazing time. Hello, sir. Hi, <laughs> Felix. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Happy New Year since I've ah, not seen you. <laughs> you're right. Many happy returns. All right. I hope you enjoy the year. Yes, I'm enjoying the year. Good. How are you too? How are you enjoying well, the year? The grace of the Lord is keeping us. All right. Yeah. All right. All grace right. is keeping us. All right. <laughs> Let me ask you to introduce yourself and yeah. then we get talking sir well i think you just did that uh, my <laughs> name is ahmed kenneth okay. kwashi okay uh the national director for bible league mm -hmm. and uh, general superintendent of the free methodist church ghana mission okay. and now a provisional conference wow yeah so wow. i am married okay very important yeah <laughs> married. and they said one wife one wife <laughs> <laughs> but many children many children okay. yeah many children and okay. grandchildren yeah all right all right yeah. all right mm. interesting well, well we'll get to talk about everything uh yeah. bible league first mm. but 2024 yeah. what does it hold for um the children of god although mm. we're already in 2024 yeah. but i'm sure people are still trying to find their feet and all that what does this year actually hold for god and his children whilst we were entering into the year well from the free methodist point of view we see 2024 as a year of power a year of power yeah okay. a year of power where we depend on the holy spirit mm -hmm. to receive power mm -hmm. and that power to exalt jesus only Okay. Yeah, so we are looking at a year of our power to exalt Jesus only. So that's how we see the year. But in terms of life in general, mm -hmm. yeah, the year will come with some challenges. Mm -hmm. Things will be difficult. But the truth is that those who know their, their God, God. Mm. those who know their God, mm. will have that power to succeed. Those who know their God, yes. they will have the power, power to succeed. To succeed. Yes. Okay. And uh, it's a year that will come with some... Uh, Fear mongering, there will be so much fear mongering, mm -hmm. and there will be so much uncertainties in the system. Okay. But like we said, we believe that those who know their God mm -hmm. and depend on their God and are willing to exalt Christ only will succeed. Right. And nothing will stop that. Nothing will stop that. Nothing will stop that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, yeah. let, let's get to talk about um, mm. um, one of our main agendas for today, yeah. mission, soul winning, mm. and everything that has to do with impact. Yeah. First of all, when we talk about mentorship and all that, yeah. when we talk about mentorship, mm. what, what do we mean by mentorship? Well, mentorship, we are simply saying someone who has embarked on a certain journey before, who has the experience, mm. who has the heart, and the willingness to teach others, taking on the responsibility to guide others or young people who are traveling on the same journey. That is what we understand or mean by mentorship. Okay. In other words, a mentor must first be someone who has embarked on the journey the mentee is embarking on. It has to be someone who is embarking on the journey. Who has embarked on embarked. that journey before. Okay. Okay. Before. The journey... Let's say I, I am embarking on a certain journey, but I must look for someone who has embarked on that journey before, before. had the experience, and is willing mm -hmm. to teach and guide me. Okay. So that is what it is. So a mentor and a mentee is that I am, if I am a mentee, mm -hmm. let's, let me put it this way. Let's say I want to plant a church. Mm -hmm. I want to be a church planter. First and foremost, if I want to be a successful church planter, I must get someone who has been a successful church planter who has the experience, who has planted a church and has the experience and is willing, willing to teach and to guide. Okay. Guide me who is about or wants to go into church planting. But then it also means that I must also be willing to respect and accept that person's guidance and instructions. Okay, so the will to respect yes. and accept that person's guidance. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. Mm. All right. Now, in mm. our Christendom, in our ministry, I should yeah. say, in mm. ministry, mm. is it very important that someone who is called into mm. the work of the ministry mm. be mentored? Very, very important. Okay. Very, very, very important. Because, you see, ministry is not like, even 
No, it's not. Ministry is not a journey you can embark on alone. It's not a journey you can embark on alone. Okay? No, you always need someone to be there for you. Apart from Christ, apart from the Holy Spirit, you need someone to be there for you. For instance, if you embark on a journey of ministry and then you hit a rock. Yes, I know you can talk to God. You can talk to the Holy Spirit. But sometimes you need a human touch. Mm. You need a human touch. If you, if, if, if you do not get the human touch, you can have all the Holy Spirit, all the power that you need, but you still be lacking. Mm. Why? Why should Jethro come to Moses? Moses was that powerful. Mm -hmm. okay. But why should Jethro come to Moses and advise Moses and say, look, what you are doing, you will die. Mm. And that was mentoring. You will die. Mm. Because look, you have so many people, so many people. Mm -hmm. who want your service. Mm. Even though you are the one carrying the power of God, you have the spirit and everything with you. You talk to God face to face. But listen, you need to do something else. You need to make sure you give people the responsibility to do the little and the minor minor so that when it comes to the greater or the bigger one, you take responsibility. That is mentoring. Mm. Jethro, we will call it, yes, wisdom, yes. But this is somebody who has embarked on that journey before. He knows what it means to delegate. He knows what it means to get people to work. To work, exactly. So he used the same experience for Moses. And when Moses accepted it, what happened? He got his leadership going. Okay. Yeah, so for mentorship or mentoring, it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Nobody should seek to embark on a journey of ministry without a mentor. You will fail. Okay, nobody should seek to yes. embark on ministry without a, a mentor. mentor. You will fail. Okay. You will fail. All right. Yeah. Now, now, when you are selecting a mentor, mm -hmm. what are some of the things to look out for in, in the selection of a mentor? God has placed a ministry yeah. in your hand um, mm -hmm. um, as a pastor, a calling in your life, I yeah. should say, as a pastor, as an mm -hmm. evangelist, as mm -hmm. an apostle, as a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what should you consider in selecting a mentor, someone that I should say wants to mentor me? Yeah. The first thing you look out for in selecting a mentor is someone who is truly a child of God, born again. Okay. In ministry. Truly a child of God. Not just someone who quotes Bible, hmm. but someone who is truly born again and has the spirit of God in him. That's number one. Number one. Okay. Number two, you must also look at whether or not the person believes in the journey you are embarking on. The belief of the journey. The journey. Okay. And has passion for it. He must believe in the journey. He must have passion on the journey you, you are embarking okay. on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number three, you must find out if the person is willing and generous to guide and to teach you. Okay. You know, teaching, it takes a generous person to teach you. In fact, to teach you to become what he has ever been or where he has gotten to before takes generosity. Okay. So the person, you must find whether the person is generous and is willing to teach and guide you. Generous and is willing to teach and guide you. Okay. Yes. And then the fourth one is that you must examine yourself whether or not you are willing to obey, to respect the mentor when he advises or he guides or teaches. Okay. So once you have these four mm -hmm. uh, tenants, you, get, you, 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 you are good to go. You are good to know who the true mentor is. Yes. Okay. All yeah. Right. So you have and to you look at all it. these things. You have to look at all these things. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. When you look at all these things yeah. and if um, you've ticked the boxes for all these things, yeah. um, how do you get the best out of your mentor? Yeah, the best out of your mentor begins with you, the mentee. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't begin with it. It <laughs> never starts with a mentor <laughs> with at a mentor. all. Okay. You see, a mentor is more or less like a midwife. Okay. Okay. Now, the midwife will never give birth. He will not, you are pregnant, you want to give birth. The midwife will not bring out the child for you. He's not going to give birth. You are going to give birth. So what the midwife does is that he or she just encourages you to push. Mm -hmm. Say push. Mm -hmm. Push. That's what the midwife can do. Encourage you and sometimes have to force you. Sometimes, you know, uh, when we come to a hospital, sometimes we hear that the midwife will actually kind of BTM. strike the uh -huh. women. No, no, push because... There's a point where the baby must come, and if you fail to push, you might hurt yourself, or the baby might die, or you might die. Mentors have that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Now, if you will not respect the mentor and you are not willing to go by his guidance, guidance. and instructions, uh -huh. you can never get the best out of that mentor. Okay. Never. So it's, it begins with you. And once the men mentor identifies that with you, then he will now open up and give you everything. Okay. He gives without reservation. Mm. But if the men mentor finds out that the mentee kind of is selective, it's like he's playing a double game. You know, sometimes many of us think someone is our mentor, yet we have other people who talk to. People to. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is not wrong to seek many counsel. But when it comes to a mentor and mentee experience, you must be willing to take advice. And what the mentor does is he doesn't do the thing for you. He won't do it for you. He, ad he only gives you he advice. He plays everything on everything. the table. Okay. And then say, okay, look at it. If you think it is good for you, go with it. Mm. If you don't believe in it, he makes not? it bare. Bare. Okay. He's not going to instruct you and force you to force do you it. To. <laughs> yeah, he's more or less a counselor, a counselor more or less an uh, advisor. Advisor, okay. That's what a mentor does. So you must be willing okay. to respect. Okay. And with prayer, always know what to do. Even if you are not accepting the guidance the mentor is giving you, you must do that with grace and respect. Okay. Even if you are not accepting the guidance. Yes. You must do that with grace and respect. Mm. And it's like you try to doubt, okay, so how about if I do it this way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you can ask you, okay, yeah. why do you think so? I think so, exactly. That's how you do it. They yeah. say, oh, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. What you're saying is, that's one thing about a mentor too. A mentor doesn't pretend to know it all. I love that. A mentor doesn't pretend to know, to know it, it all. Okay. Oh, no. The mentor respects the mentee's uh, suggestions or what ideas. the mentee also talks about. Ideas, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. He respects it. So he will kind of bring you out. He dig you out for you to come to the point where it's okay. What do you think? Once you are convinced, okay, why don't you try it? Mm. Yeah, so me mentors are not directors. Oh, I love that. Mentors are not directors. No, they are not directors. <laughs> they are not directors. Okay. They guide, they advise. Mm. And they bring, they dig something out of you. They, in fact, it's like they throw the light mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for you to discover. They throw the light. They throw the light. So that you will discover. Discover. Mm -hmm. And then you move with it. Okay. That's what my mentors do. Okay. They, they throw are, the light. They yeah. just throw the yeah, light. Yeah, they throw the light. Okay. Well, the, a mentor would not just, you will not go to a mentor and you tell a mentor, maybe your challenge is just say, there's a solution, there's a solution. No, no, no. The mentor will not do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say you, you come to a mentor and you say that, Okay, when I went to the field, I encountered some witches who were actually on my neck and they said, I will not live in that town to plant a church. The mentor will not just tell you, don't mind them. Do a do. No, no, he'll tell you, okay, so what do you think about that? Mm. Where, 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 where do you think the witches are getting their power from? Mm -hmm. Are their power more than the power of mm -hmm. your God? Mm -hmm. So he, he will kind of ask you questions, ask you questions stand. just to bring you out. To the point where you say, mm, mm. no, okay, this is it. So you get the solution and you move with it. You move with it. Yeah. That's what mentors do. All right. That's what mentors do. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Let, let's talk about um, some of the things yeah. that um, a mentor mm. will imbibe in you, if you have a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, people are looking at, okay, I have the Bible. I have mm -hmm. books that I can read. But having an actual mentor, mm -hmm. what would it imbibe and how would it shape a man? Yeah, in fact, mentor will shape you. The first thing a mentor gives you is accountability. Accountability, okay. That's the first thing. It, mm -hmm. it gives you that responsibility of accountability. Okay. Because you know there's someone who you will go and account to, mm -hmm. who will ask you questions, and who will advise you. Okay. So once you have that shaping in you, in fact, accountability is the most difficult thing mm -hmm. that everybody, many of us, will want to run away from. Everybody just wants to be his own. <laughs> okay. You understand? Exactly. But to be accountable to somebody is a difficult thing. And if you are able to have that through a mentor, that is a great shaping. Mm. And it will get you places. Because accountability, look, is the greatest one. Mm. Accountability. So, accountability. To be accountable. Now, a mentor, once he becomes your mentor, do you know what happens? If you are married, he's part of your marriage. You have a family, he's part of your family. He's part of your ministry. He's part of your finances. Everything about you, he's part of it. Mm. And you know that, okay, there's someone I am accountable to. Mm. Then it helps you to also know how, how to, to live your life. Okay. 
Because you don't want the situation where your, your mentor will hear that you have done something negative. You don't want it. And he's the only one who can also call you and say, hey, I heard this. What do you think? You are accountable. That is why I said you must first be willing to respect that person. You must be willing. Willing. You, you can't do anything about you can't, it. You, no, no. You have to be willing. Okay. Yes. And once that willingness is there, look, you have a good shaping. Okay. Yeah. That one, accountability, is, is the number one thing a mentor will do for you. Okay. Accountability. And accountability. And then also confidence. You see, because he has embarked on that journey, he has the experience. When you tell people that, look, oh, I'm talking to this man, and people know him that he's been there before, mm. it gives you that confidence. Confidence, okay. It also opens doors for you. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. It also opens doors for you. Because why? This is someone who has been there before. He has many people who know him, the ministry setup. Mm -hmm. So once they know this person is your mentor, he's mentoring you, mm -hmm. look, it opens doors. You mention his name at and places and doors are mm -hmm. opened. Exactly. Yeah, so these are the three things I can say that a mentor has shape or give you the mentee. All right. Yeah. We'll talk about some of the things to yeah. watch out for mm -hmm. um, whilst you are being uh, mentored. The yeah. mistakes that young people do yeah. when they are being mentored. What, mm -hmm. what are some of the mistakes that young people do when they are being mentored? Well, some of the mistakes is one, that the mistake of thinking that everything, you must go to your mentee for it. Is it, yeah, it's, it's the biggest mistake. Mm. Some things you have to do it and you fail forward. You fail forward. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about you. Are not, well, let me use my wife for example. Okay. When I am home, my wife will want to come to me to ask every, everything. <laughs> Even if she knows <laughs> she wants to come to me. She wants to be sure. She wants to cross check. Uh -huh. But when I'm not home, she takes the decisions that are even better. Okay. Now, so you see the mistake. The mistake is that when I'm there, it's like, I have to buy almost go to him because he, he's, he's the, the head. Uh -huh. No. You take decisions. And when you fail, we call it failing forward. You go to your mentor. The mentor will never condemn you for not coming to seek advice on that thing. Mm -hmm. No. He won't, yeah, he will, he will, he will kind of... Uh, uh, Commend you for doing that, and then also try to find out why the failure came. Mm, okay. And he will not do that by kind of uh, rebuking you. No, he said, "Okay, yeah, that was a good thing you did. You know what? It's a good thing. You don't have to be worried. You've got it to this point. But then let's talk about what do you think happened to bring about this failure? What do you think, think happened? Happened." To about this okay. Yeah, then you, you begin to talk. Okay, I think when I was going, uh, I should have uh, maybe first and foremost consult you. You say, well, okay, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and what else? Mm -hmm. And then maybe I should have gone with this. Okay, so next time if you are doing, what do you, what think do, you, you do? do? Okay. You okay, understand? So the mentor will do that to help you, and it helps you, the mentee. It helps you, the mentee. To, to, to succeed. So you don't always, everything you just want to go to the mentor for, no, it's a mistake. It's a mistake, exactly. Good. And then the second mistake is, when you get to a point where you think that, oh, you have gotten what you need, mm -hmm. and you kind of now begin to disrespect your mentor. mentor. Now you don't need him. It's like, oh, I'm done with you. Used and done. Mm. It's the biggest mistake. Mm -hmm. Because you see, ministry doesn't end. Ministry doesn't, it doesn't end. end. Okay. You die with it. Hmm. Ministry, you know, when I hear people say we have retired, yeah, I say, well, <laughs> okay, retired from what? Retired, uh -huh, retired, Nobody retires uh -huh, from, ministry. from ministry. The fact that today I say, okay, I am not an active service in terms of pastoring a church doesn't mean I have retired because I have people, pastors who will still come to me hmm, for advice. advice. And that's a ministry. On it's a ministry. Okay. I still encourage people. It's a ministry. So, Ministry doesn't end. So if it was because you wanted to plant a church and now you've planted a church and you think you don't need your mentor, how about tomorrow if there's a problem? Mm. You can have challenges. You can have someone breaking out of your church. And you are confused. Mm. What do you do? You need your mentor. Mm. So you keep that relationship till death. Mm. You keep that relationship yes, till it's death. It's a mistake to do away with a relationship with a mentor. It's a mistake. Okay. Mm. It's a mistake. As long as they are there and they are capable, 
even if they are not capable, you still don't take away that relationship. Because it comes to a point where now you have gotten to that point, you have to also help your mentor. Mm. So that relationship continues. But easily many of us young guys, mm -hmm. once we get what we need, that's all. Or we are looking for another person. Mm -hmm. So you see a mentee hopping from one mentor to another, from one mentor to another. And at the end of the day, you don't even know who is his or her mentor. Okay. Have so many of them. And that's a mistake. Mm. It's a big mistake. And the third one is that you should not have so many men mentors. Okay. No, no. You should have so many of them. One. One is okay. All others, inclusive, will just be people. Maybe you consult, you, consult, you seek counsel. Okay. But when you talk about a mentor, have one. Okay. When you talk about a mentor, yeah, have, have one. one. Have one. Wow. Yeah, have That's one. Amazing. That you, can res you respect. Mm. That you, I mean, that you know has been there before. Okay. Just don't go for anybody because he has a name. No. You see, for instance, if I want to be a church planter, a church planter, I will not go looking for someone who is just a pastor who has never planted a church before. Wow. There are people who are pastors but have never planted a church before. Okay. There are people who have planted a church and they are pastoring. Mm -hmm. They are two different types. Now, if I am embarked on a church planted, I should get someone who has embarked on that journey before. Who has planted a church. Yes. And is pastoring. Yes. Okay. You know, we have what? Uh, my former director, Thomas Amua, once said something. He said... Some of us in ministry transfer notes. Mm. We just transfer notes. We don't have any experience. It's transfer. We read the books and we transfer those transfer notes. Mm. But those who have practiced mm. and have read, they just don't transfer notes. They impact. They impact. Mm. They impact. Okay. So you look for someone who has embarked on that journey to guide and to mentor you on church planted. Okay. So you just don't go looking for people because they have names. And that's what happens these days. Oh, I heard of this man. He has a name. No. So you end up having him as a mentor, but you never succeed. Okay. Because you went for the name. You went for, for the, the name. name. Mm -hmm. And the person has never embarked on that journey. He doesn't understand what you are talking about. The fact that he's pastoring a church, or he has a name, uh -huh. doesn't mean mm -hmm. he knows what it takes to plant a church. Okay. The fact that he's pastoring a church. Yes. Or has a name, yeah. doesn't he has the grace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because these days, we have people who are actually hired. To pastor a church, they hire them. Mm. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe here we don't have that so much. But when you go to these advanced countries, people are hired. Pastors are hired. We hire you like we hire anybody here. Mm -hmm. Come and pastor. Once they've gone to the Bible school, they have their certificate. That's all. They hire them. Once they have what it takes to keep leadership and uh, manage the church, why not? They are pastors. I'm not saying that is wrong, but the point is that if you want to embark on the journey. You must have someone who has embarked on that journey before. If you want to embark on a journey, yeah. you must have someone who has embarked on yeah. a journey before. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you'll be in the middle of nowhere and you'll be confused. <laughs> <laughs> middle of nowhere. Yeah. And you, you are just confused. You'll be, you'll be confused. Seriously confused. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and many, many of us young men fail in ministry because of this attitude. Mm. Yeah. Many of us fail because think, oh, no, 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 please. <laughs> wow. Mentoring is a serious business. Mentoring is a serious business. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. We're still talking to Reverend Dr. Yeah. Kenneth Ahmed Kwashi, and we mm -hmm. are talking mentorship mm -hmm. and all that. And I trust that you have been blessed. After mm -hmm. this break, we will still move on um, uh, with our conversation. And this time, we will get to talk about church planting and uh, missionary works. And I mm -hmm. trust that it will be a blessing to you. Don't go anywhere. This is Impact Life. I'll be back after this break. <music> No worry, fable, worry, March, it from May, June down to December. Got your been so good. Count my blessings, name them one by one. You've been so good, I will not forget. I will not forget. I will not forget. Welcome back. You're still watching Impact Live, and we're still having an insightful conversation with uh, Reverend Dr. Kenneth Ahmed um, um, Kwashi, and we are having and all sometimes he's just shared on mentorship and I trust it has been a blessing. Well, let's, let's talk about some of the things you do. Uh -huh. um, Bible League Ghana. Uh -huh. 
and I, I know that is something that is on your heart. Yeah. Um, taking the gospel to places yeah. where the gospel has not been heard. Yeah. Let's talk about this vision. For 2023, mm. what were some of the highlighting factors that will forever linger on your mind mm. in terms of evangelism, so winning, missionary mm. works concerning Bible League Ghana? Uh, thank you, Rev. Felix. Uh, with Bible League, we believe we are called by God to provide training scriptures so that people who are called by the Holy Spirit will be brought into the Church of Christ okay. and have fellowship with Christ. Mm -hmm. And in doing this, we have what we call Project Philip. Okay. Project Philip is actually taken from Acts chapter 8 where we have the encounter of Philip and the Ethiopian Enoch mm -hmm. who the Bible said traveled from Ethiopia to Jerusalem okay. uh, to pray which was the norm in those days and on his way back he bought one of the scrolls and was reading and uh, the spirit of God came to Philip and said hey my friend get up take the road to Gaza mm -hmm. he took that road and then he saw this Ethiopian Enoch who was the let's say more or less the finance minister of Ethiopia then the queen of Ethiopia reading and then the Spirit of God said, get closer to the chariot. He got closer and heard the man reading from Isaiah 53. And then uh, he asked the man, do you understand what you are reading? reading? He said, no. How can I understand? Unless and except somebody explains. Mm. Then he invited Philip to sit with him in the chariot. And then Philip began from the same scripture. Explained and what? Preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to him. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said, the Ethiopian accepted Christ. Okay. He believed. Why? Because he got someone to explain. So what we believe in Bible is that we can all have the Bibles or scriptures, mm -hmm. but it takes someone who understands, who has the Spirit of God to explain for you to understand. Okay. Yeah, he had a Bible. This man could read, right? But he didn't know what it meant or how he could even become a Christian. He was looking for God, searching for God. But I didn't know how to find God. How to find God. So it, it took Philip to show him how to find God. And he found God and went happily. So Bible League, that's what we do. And we do this by giving materials, portions. We call them portions. And what we, we call them portions because we take scriptures. Portions of the scriptures in the book. And then ask questions based on the scriptures. Okay. So when you get, when we give you a material, what it means is that you are actually reading the Bible and answering questions based on what you have read. Okay. Yeah, for uh, evangelism and discipleship. And we have this for kids. We have this for teens. We have this for the youth. We have this for the adult. Okay? And that's how it is structured. And uh, after that, we give Bibles. When people go through the engagement, they finish Bible studies, we give them Bibles to continue with their, uh, what do we call it? Christian uh, spiritual formation. Formation, okay. Yeah. So that's what Bible, that's what we do. And we also have what we call the church planting. And the church planting, we train church planters. You know, I don't like using the word ordinary. There's nothing like ordinary persons, or mm. ordinary people. Ordinary, There's okay. nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we are looking at people in church who don't even believe they can be leaders, who don't think they can even be church planters. planters. We only bring them, then we try to get you to understand, to discover yourself. Mm -hmm. And once you discover yourself, we train you within a year and you plant a church. Wow. And that's why within a year and the church is planted. Wow. So we'll give you a training. We have it four models. You come quarterly for the training. You go to the field, you work, you come back. After three months, you go to the field, work, come back. So by the end of the year, you have planted a church. All right. And that's what we do. So for that one, pastors, let me say Christians in general, once you are willing. We are able to train you to plant a church. All right. And that's what has been going on. And we've been planting churches since. And 2023, for instance, we recruited 100 people and they planted more than 100 churches. 100 people? Yes. And they planted more than 100, more than 100 churches. churches. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, 2023, that's what happens. Wow. Because the point is that we work together with you, the church planter. You come for training, you go to the field, we visit you, we advise where we think. The mentoring there. Yeah, mentioned we, there. We, we look at it, okay, what do you think? 
talk about it. You ask all the questions. We also try to ask all the questions. You get all the answers. So why, why don't you try it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what we do. All right. Yeah. And when, it, mm -hmm. when it comes to evangelism, mm -hmm. this year we actually got about 20,000 children. Wow. Who were engaged yeah, through engaged. the scriptures. Okay. And we had more than 5,000 giving their life to Christ. 5, and the youth say we have about 7,000 youth giving their life to Christ. Wow. And the adult was 15,000, mm -hmm. uh, about 3,000 of them giving their life to Christ. Wow. Yeah, so that is what we do. Wow. Yeah, that's the Bible League. Wow. Yeah. When, when you see all these pastors uh, being trained, like mm -hmm. 100 pastors being yeah. trained for church planting, yeah. what goes on in your heart? Well, it's a joy. It's a you joy. know what? Okay. We believe. That nobody takes God to a community. God is already there. Nobody takes God to a to community. any community. No, God is, already God is already there. We only take people there to reveal God in the community. God is everywhere. Mm -hmm. He's already there. So, can you imagine having a community where God is alive there? God is there, and you don't even know God exists. Mm. And then you are able to get someone who never thought he could do that. You train the person. He goes there. And within a year, he's able to reveal Christ. He reveals God. And the community embraces Christ. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When Christ comes into a community, it's not just the people coming to know Christ. It also brings development. Mm. Yeah. It brings development. In fact, it brings health. Anything good socially happens. Mm. And when this happens, that's a joy. You understand? That's a joy. Because what can you give to man? Apart from revealing God to man. Mm. What can you give man? Yeah. Apart from revealing God to man. Yes. It's the best thing. Mm. It's the best thing. Because why? He created the heaven and the earth. And we have his nature, yet we don't know him. Mm. Can you imagine? They say, this is your father. You have a father, yet you don't know your father. You don't know your father. <laughs> can you imagine that? Uh -huh. Can you imagine what your, your siblings or brothers or friends will tell you? Oh, oh that guy is a bastard. He doesn't know he his doesn't father. Know his father. Mm. So... This, that is what it is. Because Jesus said, let's say he's our father. Our father means everybody's father. Mm. Okay? These are people living with their father, yet they don't know their father. They are living with their father. Yes. But yet they don't know, they don't know him. Wouldn't you be a hero if you're able to let them know, ah, all these years you have been living here, this is your father. <laughs> Wouldn't you be a hero? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, so it's a joy when mm. we say that. And secondly, I mean... Can you imagine having your, a whole community who have lived with their father all these years? Mm -hmm. Yet because they don't know this father, they die and are destroyed. Mm. And you know the father. Mm. And you're not revealing that father you're to them. The Can you imagine mm. what it means? Uh -huh. So th those are the things we look at, we think about, and we are so happy that, look, we train brothers and sisters who never thought they could do that. Mm -hmm. They are doing it, and they are revealing God wherever they find themselves, and God is drawing many mm -hmm. of his children to himself. Mm -hmm. It's a joy. It's a joy. It's a joy. It's a joy. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Now, church planting, what mm -hmm. goes into church planting? Yeah, what goes into church planting in terms of uh, training? One, we begin by you, the church. In fact, what we do as Bible League, we don't just train uh, individuals who come and say, train us. We partner with the church. So you must come from a church. You must come from a church. Okay, yes. that's the first thing. You must come from a denomination. You must come from a group, mm -hmm. a body. A body. That is a church of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, when they bring you, mm -hmm. we'll interview you. Oh, okay. We'll take you through an interview process. Okay. But what we we'll first do is that we we'll try to let you know what it is entailed in church planting. In church planting, okay. What you go through. What you must do, we, mm -hmm. give, we, we place all that on the table, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, we ask you, are you ready? Are mm -hmm. you willing? You say yes. Mm -hmm. That is how you pass your, your interview. Mm -hmm. Then after that, mm -hmm. we begin the process. Mm -hmm. You give us a profile. You give your profile form. You fill the form and everything. Mm -hmm. Then we start the training okay. for models. Mm -hmm. okay. We give you all the materials. We give you all the materials. For model, first model is to take you through what we call a spiritual mapping, mm -hmm. and then also evangelism, mm -hmm. how to do evangelism, how mm -hmm. to reach people, how to communicate, and all that will take you through all mm -hmm. that for the first model, okay. for you to go to the field. Then when you come back for the second model, then we teach you how to disciple the people. Okay. Now, after 
the, the second model, you come for the third model, we are looking at how to lead. Okay. Leadership. Lead so these are all thoughts. All leadership. thoughts. Yes, okay. all thought. Leadership, administration, and all that. Mm -hmm. Then the fourth one is now how to fellowship and worship. Okay. Then the church is planted. Okay. Yeah, so that's what goes into church planting. We don't you don't pay. You don't pay. Okay. No. All is free. Okay. All right. All right. So the material is mm -hmm. free, training mm -hmm. free. Everything is free. Everything is free. Yeah. All right. So um, what would you tell pastors concerning uh, Bible <laughs> League? <laughs> well, Bible League for me, uh, it's not the only ministry. Let me not make it as if Bible League is the only ministry that is helping enriching people in terms of missions. So we have so many of them. Mm -hmm. But Bible League is the only ministry that combines three things. Mm -hmm. Number one, training. 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 Number two, we'll give you the, 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 we, we'll give you the materials. And they'll work together with you. Okay. Training. Training. Materials. Materials. And work together. Scriptures. And they'll work together with you. Mm -hmm. We are the only organization that combines all this training. Some can have training without the Bibles and materials. Okay. Some can have materials without Bibles. But we have the training. We have the materials. We have the Bibles. Okay. It's the only organization in Ghana that have these three okay. combined. All right. And uh, we do that with grace and uh, we, we have so many great partners like the Pentecost Church, mm -hmm. like the Presby Church, like the Global Evangelical, mm -hmm. the Free Methodist. Yeah, okay. great, great partners. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Who we'll ensure? Who we'll ensure that, yeah, ministry is going on, missions is going on, church planting is going on, evangelism is going on, discipleship is going on. We don't do it directly. Mm -hmm. We don't interface with the people directly. We do that through the church or the partner. Okay. Yeah, we don't go directly to the first say we want to teach you. No, no, mm -hmm. The churches must bring the people. We train them to go back to the churches. So, for instance, mm -hmm. if your church should bring 100 people now, mm -hmm. and they are, they are going to plant 100 churches for your church. Wow. Yeah, that's what wow. we do. Wow. We, do, we don't interface directly with the, 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 the Ethiopians. We call them Ethiopians. Those who are coming to press them. You have your own languages. With yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> the Philip is the trainer, the one we train to be Philip to engage. Uh -huh. And the Ethiopian is the one who uh -huh. is engaged with the scriptures and finally becomes a Christian or grows in his Christian life. All oh, right. That, yeah. That's great. That's great. <laughs> in, in church planting, yeah. uh, right, what, what are some of the things that, mm -hmm. and missionary work, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that um, someone who wants to venture into this should keep in mind? Mm. One, if the, pers the person must be born again, that the one. must be born again, okay. That one. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. <laughs> we don't compromise it at all. Okay. And our born again is not what people just say born again, born again. You see, many of us think that born again is all about your daily life, what you do daily. Mm -hmm. But that's not what born again means. That's not it? No, 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 no. Okay. Because when Jesus explained, when he talked to Nicodemus, he was talking to Nicodemus, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If it's about living the pious life that we want to talk about, Nicodemus is one. But Jesus said, you must be born again. What does it mean? You must believe. And Jesus Christ and believe in his finished work, mm. knowing that through him you have what we call eternal redemption. Eternal redemption, okay. Eternal redemption, not temporal redemption. Okay, many of us believe in temporal redemption. You can never be born again mm. when your faith is temporal redemption. Jesus said, Who is born again. He said, the one who believes. Is that what he said in John 1? Exactly. That those who received him and believed were given the right to become what? Children of God. Not born of what? A man or a woman, but born of God. And that is born again. What does it take to be born again? Is belief. Mm -hmm. Believing in who? Jesus Christ. That he died and finished everything on the cross for us. Mm -hmm. And you continue to hold on to this belief. That is, in, that is what it means to be born again. So the person must be born again. The person must be born again. Must be born again. Then, the person must be willing to submit to his church that is bringing him for training. Mm -hmm. Because we have situations where people are trained. Honestly, one can easily plant a church with our system. Mm -hmm. And one can easily call himself apostle. <laughs> by just planting a church. Mm -hmm. So you must be willing to submit to the church that mm -hmm. brought you for training. Mm -hmm. And the church that is bringing you must convince us that yes, they trust your loyalty to continue to be with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
After that, if you are married, you must have the support of your wife. The support of your wife? Yes. If your wife is not in agreement, we will never train you. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because listen to me. If you train anybody to go and plant a church, who doesn't have the support of the wife? That church will never be planted. Mm. It will never be planted. Is it by experience? If, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. by experience. Even if it plants the church, the church will collapse. Okay. We have a situation where <laughs> it is in Jema in the Kentampo district. Okay. Now I think it's a district by, by okay. his own. We train that this guy was a Baptist guy. Mm -hmm. We train him to go and plant a church mm -hmm. in the Jema area. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the support of the wife. Mm -hmm. But the wife didn't tell us. Mm -hmm. So when they went to the field, the guy struggled to plant the church. In the evening, you know, there was no light. Mm -hmm. This guy would pick a lantern from the house mm -hmm. to go and do the fellowship or what, to have fellowship. Mm -hmm. The woman would walk from the house, come and pick the lantern and say, my friend, you cannot leave me in the dark and bring the lantern. <laughs> and he created a scene. A scene, wow. And finally, the guy had to leave that place and the church was not planted. Wow. Yeah, so our rule is that you must have the support of your wife. Mm -hmm. Because if you are going to ministry, especially in church planting, you have a wife, you are not going to do it all alone. All alone, yeah. Your wife is going to be part of whatever you are doing. Mm -hmm. So she must be willing mm -hmm. to support you. Your wife must be willing to support yes. you. Yes. Okay. And the third one, you must be someone who is not indebted. Mm -hmm. No. You don't train someone to go and plant a church who is indebted and continue to live in, uh, be, be in debt. No. Mm. So if you have debt, we try to encourage you to see how to take it out. And then you must be willing mm. to sacrifice. You come to a point you have to even sell your own assets. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. So this is what the church planter must understand mm -hmm. before he goes into church planting. You know, like I said, when my former director told us that many of us Transfer notes. Okay. Because we go to train church planters. Mm -hmm. We have never planted a church before. yet. We... <laughs> so I, I became, and I said, no, I think what you are saying is true. Mm -hmm. So I decided to plant a church myself. And the mm -hmm. church I pastored today, I planted it myself. You, you planted a church that yes. you pastored? Okay. Yeah, so I decided to do that in 2010. Now, in planting a church, you won't believe I sold three cars. Ooh. Yes. Three cars. Ooh. My brother gave me a car. At that time, he saw my challenge. He saw that I was challenged with vehicle going to work and coming. He gave me a car, and I saw a need for the church, so I sold that car. He gave me another one. I sold it. <laughs> and third one, I bought it myself. And I you sold, sold it. it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but today the church is thriving. It's thriving. Okay. The church is growing. So if you're not willing to do, it, can you imagine you selling cars and your wife is not in agreement? It will be war in the house. Ah, yeah. It can cause divorce. Which divorce. Can actually break down the ministry. Exactly. So once your wife is in support, there are things you can do and do it easily, and you'll be blessed. Mm. Uh -huh. So if you are not willing to do this, forget about it. And you must also be someone who knows how to connect and keep relationship. You must know how to connect. Connect and, and keep, keep relationship. relationship. Okay. Well, the point is that in church planting, you need help. Okay. One, even within your church. Mm. Your mother church, you need help. Mm. And you, you, if you don't know how to connect, and you don't know how to keep a relationship, especially with your church leadership, then you, 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 you struggle uh, uh, in church planting. Mm. Because you need help, you need to go with your report and to show the church what you need, and there might be people willing to help. And when they help you, you must learn to keep that relationship. When they help, yes. you must be willing to keep that relationship. Learn okay. to keep that relationship. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing is that you must be willing to report. Okay. Many of us don't like reporting. Mm -hmm. Reporting is something Ghanaians, mm -mm, we don't like it. <laughs> oh, why, why do you want me to report? Oh, let, let, you, I've done the work. Yes, you've done the work, but I report. Okay. How do you do the report? And you see, many of us don't know that reporting benefits even the reporter. Oh, reporting fact, benefits the reporter. You, the reporter, you are the first beneficiary of your report. Mm -hmm. You know why? Okay, for instance, you are on the field, and then you've got it to a point where you need a land. Okay, you need a land. Now, if you don't report, how will anybody know that you need a land? Mm. So, in your report, you write, okay, we've got it to this point. We have this number of people. We, we, in fact, we, 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 we sit, we, we meet in somebody's uh, uncompleted room, mm -hmm. and now we've seen a land we have to buy, or we need a land. It will be captured in the report. So once that report comes out, it gets to your leadership. Mm 
and your leadership also communicates to the mother church in fellowship, somebody will pick it up and say, okay, I want to buy that land. Mm -hmm. So who benefits? You. Do. You. Mm -hmm. So the first beneficiary of a report is the reporter. And the second beneficiary is the one you are reporting to. Mm -hmm. Okay? The church leadership. And the third beneficiary of a report is the organization, if we trained you. Mm -hmm. Because after you report to your, ch your mother church, mm -hmm. we go to the mother church for mm -hmm. the report. So we also benefit. And when we benefit, we are not just the one benefiting. We also have donors mm -hmm. and prayer partners who are praying 24-7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bible League, we actually have people we have paid to pray. To pray. They, they just pray. Yeah, they are paid to pray. That is their job. Mm -hmm. And they pray 24-7. Mm -hmm. So when these reports are sent to them, what happens? Mm -hmm. They also pray. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay? And then the fourth beneficiary of the report is what? The community. The community in which you are planting the church. Because your report will indicate, okay, there's no water. The community likes this bridge. The community likes light. The community likes water. All those things will be captured in your report. Mm. Why? Your pastors can easily take this report to an MP, MC, or DC, and say, look, this community, they need water. Mm. Or even in the church, you can have some people who, who, who are well-to-do, who want to do something, yet they don't know where to put their money. They just said, oh, wow, I want to go and take this water for this community. So the community benefits. Okay. And the final one, the glory all goes to God. The glory the all fifth. goes to God, okay. Yes, the fifth beneficiary. And everything that he encompasses all, everything goes to him. And he is happy with you. What do you think will happen? Mm. He brings you more blessing. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, so these are the things a church planter must know and be willing to do. Otherwise, you can't be a good church planter. Okay. And you cannot even be a good missionary. Every missionary must know these five things. Okay. Yeah. All right. What are some of the challenges that are um, unfilled but not written on paper? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that would be a cultural, someone would say a cultural shock. Yeah. To, uh -huh, yeah. As a missionary. Like, okay. like you just said, the cultural shock is mm -hmm. there. The social shock is there. Is there. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes health. Mm -hmm. Because you have a situation where you want to plant a church. Let's mm -hmm. say you are drinking bottled water, right? Mm -hmm. And we send you to a village where they, do, they have never even seen a bottle of water before. They drink from the streams. You have never done that. What will happen? You have to drink. You have to drink, exactly. Because let me tell you, if the community gets to find out you don't drink their water, mm -hmm. they invite you to eat their food, you don't eat their food, they will never come to you for your church planting. Wow. You have to be like them. Mm. So sometimes you have, you have health challenges. Okay, and you also have people who we call the demons of the community who want to fight <laughs> against the church, who doesn't want to see the light. Uh -huh. They want, they, 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 they desire darkness to be mm -hmm. where they are, so they will fight you. Mm -hmm. So you, the way you put it, demons of the community. Yes, demons of the community. <laughs> yeah, they will fight you because they, 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 they don't want to see. They the don't light. want to see that thing. Yeah, uh -huh. that one is also there. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you also encounter challenges with authorities. Okay. Yeah, people in authority who doesn't like the church. Mm. They just don't like anything church. They also fight you. Mm. Those are the challenges you can face. But in all, the Lord is more powerful. More powerful. In all, the yeah. Lord is, the more, Lord is powerful. more powerful. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much. Because of television time, this is yeah. where we'll have to end. Thank, Thank you, you so much for uh, the things that you've shared with us. Mm -hmm. What's your final word to those who are watching this concerning mentorship, church planting, mm -hmm. and um, everything that has to do with missions? Yeah, my final word is uh, truly and honestly, we are all here on assignment. All of us, especially those of us who have believed in Christ and have the seed of the Holy Spirit in us. Mm -hmm. We are here on assignment. And the assignment is that all must come to the knowledge mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. So let us do our best. Yes, we'll go through challenges, but the truth is that our Lord is more powerful. And he will guide us and take us through at the end of the day. We have always been victorious and will continue to live in victory. Mm -hmm. So let us not derail or want to do other things. But listen to me. We are here just to exalt Christ. Mm -hmm. And let us all do well to exalt Christ only by preaching the gospel and discipling people with the gospel. Mm -hmm. This is what I call for. And I plead with all ministers of the gospel, with everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, to take it up.
Thank you. Thank you too. Thank and please, you. can you pray for missionaries and those who yeah. are watching us who want to do ministry? Yeah. Yeah. Father, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Amen. you have said it takes your calling for anybody to come to you. And it also takes your designation for anybody to work as a missionary. We pray, Lord, Lord, those you've already sent into and onto the field who are working, you'll be with them. Yeah. Even as we talk now, we know some people, missionaries, are working through dangerous territories. And we ask the Lord, you will send your angels mm -hmm. to guide and protect them. And you will be with them, oh God. Mm -hmm. We pray that, Lord, your word only will be exalted in our nation mm -hmm. and in the nations. That you prove yourself powerful. Yes, you are powerful. None. And we dare not compare anything with you because you created everything. And everything will end with you. And you continue to live. Father, bless your work and bless your word. And bless your servants all over the world. And let your will only be done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. Thank you so God much, bless you. Thank you. God Thank bless you. you. Always a delight talking to uh, Reverend Dr. Mm. Kenneth Ahmed Kwashi. And mm. I trust you have been blessed. And mm. definitely you can sign up for Bible League Ghana. Mm. Right after an advert of Bible League Ghana, whatever contact you need um, for to join Bible League Ghana so that you can be trained as a missionary will show on your screen. Well, my name is Felix Dazi. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, if you're watching this on television, head straight to our YouTube channel too. Go have a wonderful time. Repeat this and listen to it over and over and over and over. They say repetition is the law of deep and constant impression. We'll have an amazing time as you keep listening to this. On YouTube, it is I-M-P-A-C-T-L-I-V-E with Felix Dazzi. Impact Life with Felix Dazzi. I'll see you same time on our next edition. Till then, God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>